see you. It's been a long time since we did a little Q&A episode, like a year and a half long time. My bad, but I'm betting you've had lots of questions in that time, so let's answer some of them. I'm also going to announce the challenge question winners from our Hurricanes video. Those five people will be getting a free It's Okay to Be Smart t-shirt. Stay tuned, we'll do that at the end of the video. But now, it's time for Ask Joe Stuff. On Twitter, Israel Fernandez asks, which has been your favorite video to make and why? Without a doubt, my favorite video to make was, is big data getting too big? Because dressing up like a 1980s cable access host has always been a dream of mine. That was probably the most fun we've had shooting a video. And it probably means that trapped somewhere inside me is a really dorky 80s kid which is exactly what I actually am. Uh, Andrew did an incredible job on the graphics for that one. I hear if you watch it in 240p, you might actually think it's an old VHS video. I also loved my collab with Physics Girl and Arc Attack because I got to dress up in chain mail and get struck by lightning, which was awesome. And my collab with Jake from Vsauce 3 about AI was awesome because Jake is awesome and he looked really good in a Star Trek uniform. Um, also our Minecraft video because we shot most of it in Minecraft. You know what? I love all my videos. On Instagram, Darwinning21 asks, what is your favorite type of biology and why? Also, what was it like working with Aaron Pomerantz? Working with Aaron was awesome. Aaron is an awesome insect biologist with his own YouTube channel, and we recently traveled to the Peruvian rainforest together to make a bunch of videos. This was a life-changing experience, being in one of the richest and most biodiverse places on Earth and it was also very, very sweaty. Stay tuned for our videos from Peru starting in the next couple weeks. But it would be impossible to pick a favorite part of biology. I mean, biology is by far my favorite subject, which is why I got my PhD in it. But I can't pick a favorite because the more I've learned about biology, the more that I've seen that every field within it is connected. If you want to understand insects, then eventually you want to ask questions about their genetics, their evolution, and their habitat, their ecology, or the interesting physics that gives them their colors, or the chemistry that lets them eat this food or makes them toxic. It all feeds into this larger story about how life works, and I love the whole story, not just one little part. On Facebook, Joshua Freshwater asks, what's the most complicated video you've had to make and was it worth the effort? So anytime you're trying to condense these big mind-blowing parts of science into five minutes, that's gonna be a tough job. But I think the most complicated might have been why are we multicellular and the most important moment in the history of life. I actually wrote these two videos to kind of go together as one because they describe two of the most important transition points in evolution. How we went from bacteria and archaea to complex cells like ours and how life became multicellular. These were kind of important things but they also took billions of years to play out and all of that biochemistry and genetics and other biology that tells this story could fill an entire college class. And a lot of it I didn't learn or fully understand until I was in graduate school. So getting those into a couple of videos was a tough job, but totally worth it. Those early moments in the evolution of life just don't get enough attention. And it's some of my favorite writing and research that I've ever done. On Instagram, at Ari William W asks, what field did you get your PhD in? I got my PhD in cell and molecular biology from this place, Hook'em. I studied gene editing and these ancient weird genetic things that kind of jump around inside genomes. If you want to know more, I guess I'll put a link to my dissertation or something down in the description. Should be great if you're having trouble sleeping. On Facebook, Wong E. Lin asks, can we travel through time? Well, yes, in the forward direction at the rate of one second per second. Ah. You wanted more than that. Okay, so you get yourself going very close to the speed of light or hang out near something massive like a black hole. Thanks to relativity, time will pass more slowly for you compared to someone watching you from very far away, which is pretty much the plot of the movie Interstellar. And also this recent video from Vsauce 3, which is great. Backwards time travel? Probably not. We'd sort of have to bend space time back on itself. We could jump from one point here and now to another, like here and then. It's the old wormhole thing. Physicists like Kip Thorne, who worked on a lot of the science for Interstellar, think that wormholes, those little theoretical doors that connect two different points in space and time, might be able to do this. The math works out, mostly, but it would involve A, making a wormhole, and B, accelerating it close to the speed of light, two things that we don't know how to do, and which actually might be impossible. On Facebook, Marie Gaudet asks, can dogs tell time? 
Every day, I know exactly when it's 8 a.m. because my dogs look at me and start whining for breakfast like clockwork. They can't actually read a clock, of course, but they can definitely sense time. Lots of animals can. Most complex organisms on Earth, from plants to dogs to birds to humans, have some kind of programmed biological clock that we call circadian rhythms. They work a little differently in different organisms, but there's basically genes and cells that respond to things like light and dark and adjust the organism's behavior accordingly. I talked about how plants sense the length of days in my recent Do Plants Think video, and we talked about how our brains sensing light and dark actually affects our sleep cycle in Why Do We Have to Sleep? On Facebook, Sander Thompson asks, what do you think is a superior weapon, a lightsaber or sonic screwdriver? Definitely the lightsaber, but that's because a sonic screwdriver isn't a weapon, it's a tool, and that's what makes it so much cooler than a lightsaber. It's like Gallifrey and duct tape. Uh, Time Lord Swiss Army Knife, it's about the creativity and smarts of the person holding it. Although, the lightsaber does have one key advantage, it works on wood. On Instagram, at tobym13 asks, what's your favorite science fact? If you took all the viruses in the ocean and stacked them end to end, they would reach 200 million light years into space. That's like four times farther away than the Virgo Galaxy Cluster. Totally true, source down there. On Twitter, at one letter two men asks, is a pirate twice as likely or half as likely to win a staring competition? Excellent question. First one to blink loses. I assume the pirate is wearing an eye patch, and if the pirate is using their non-eye patch eye for the staring contest, then they have the same chance of winning the contest as a non-pirate, because I don't know about you, but I always blink my eyes together. But if they're using their eye patch eye, then they're almost guaranteed to win. Just ask my old friend, One-Eyed Willie. That's it for another Ask Joe Stuff episode. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. Sorry we didn't get to all of them. We'll do this again sometime. We did get one question from a bunch of people, which is how we make these videos and how this all got started. Turns out we're getting pretty close to a million subscribers, which is totally bonkers to me, but uh, if that happens, I think maybe we should make that video, tell you the story of all this. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. Maybe we'll make that video. And now it is time to announce the winners of our challenge question from our hurricane video a few weeks back. I asked why Jupiter's red spot spins in the opposite direction we would expect it to being a cyclonic storm. Well, hurricanes on Earth are low pressure storms. The air moves in from the outside. The Coriolis effect works accordingly. Jupiter's red spot is a high pressure storm. The air is moving out from the middle. Same Coriolis effect, opposite directions. Here are the five people who sent in their answers correctly. We randomly chose them. We'll be in touch to get you an awesome It's Okay to Be Smart I Did a Science shirt so you can show off your curiosity, sciencey love, and you'll look good doing it. Thank you again. We'll see you next time and stay curious. But what's really warming the Earth? The climate's a complex system influenced by everything from our orbit to gases in our atmosphere to volcanoes. And when we say warmer, warmer compared to what? For most of history, temperature records look something like this. Hot today, hotter than yesterday, gonna be hot tomorrow. But with the development of accurate thermometers and standardized temperature scales in the 1700s, we could finally get some real data from ships crossing the ocean, weather stations around the world, hashtag colonialism. But none of this explains the cause. It could be human activity, but it could also be so many other things. 